the lower the barrier to entry, the more competition you're going to have. That's just natural. Mm. That's why I do encourage people to, you know, once they've, they understand the game, they understand their print providers, they understand how to make mock-ups and quality designs on different products, spreading your wings and trying to figure out a way to get on Amazon, to get on Walmart, you know, potentially if you have a more of a narrow niche, maybe even a Shopify. Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Coffee with Kittle. Today I'm super excited because uh, I've got Travis with me from the Print on Demand cast. I was on their show recently. We had a great time talking about Kittle, mm -hmm. talking about how you can use that for Print on Demand. But Travis, as I understand it, is one of the uh, Print on Demand efficiency gurus. I, I hear that you <laughs> like to get into the nitty gritty. You have like, uh, I was listening to something, maybe you have like sheets or something. I don't know, some, some, some kind of crazy. Yeah processes you have for how to be super efficient with things like uh, Etsy, Amazon, uh, Shopify, wherever else you're, you're listing all this stuff. So I'm mm -hmm. excited to learn from you some mad tips and tricks on how I can just be more productive. Before we dive into some of that, like things like how I would list more often, more at a time, mm -hmm. like productivity hacks you have, give us a little bit of feedback on you and the podcast and just a little bit of your experience before we dive in. Sure. So um, I got into e-commerce in like 2014, was mainly selling on Amazon um, and doing a lot of retail arbitrage, just, you know, going to stores and getting deals with the managers and mm. um, doing online arbitrage as well. Same kind of thing, just stacking discounts and trying to get whatever I could sent yeah. into Amazon, you know, uh, did some private label, had a couple of uh, product lines that we launched and um uh, you know, we're importing things from China, you know, and uh, okay. putting our lab our labels on it, yeah. reboxing them, repackaging them. Um, and so we were doing a lot of that. And at one point, a friend of mine who was also doing the same thing, um, we talked about starting a conference. And so we started the okay. Rocky Mountain Reseller Conference, which was in Denver from 16, 2016 to 2018. We did three years of it. And it was a lot of fun. We had, you know, 200 to 300 people in the same room all over the country. Lots wow. of, you know, people that were doing, um, you know, a lot of Amazon centric, uh, you know, things. Um, and Merch by Amazon had come out around that time. And somebody had said, hey, you got to jump on this. And so I started hiring designers, um, you know, and, and really just pumping out the designs to put on uh, merch by Amazon. Now okay. Amazon merch on demand. Um, and the second year of that conference, I heard somebody talk about um, like after hours, like in the bar, we were just networking and hanging out. They were saying uh, they were talking about sublimating coffee mugs um, in their basement, you know? So I'm like, what, what's, what's that? Hmm. And so I, I learned um, very quickly that it was pretty inexpensive to get like, um, you know, a heat press and a, and you sure. could convert a printer to do use the sublimation dyes instead of the regular inks. And so we started doing that a lot of, obviously a lot of, uh, testing and, you know, burnt mm. mugs and trying to figure oh, out all gosh. the recipes yeah. and all that. Um, but once we got it going, I started using all those merch by Amazon designs that I'd already had and already put on, you know, t-shirts on, on Amazon. And we started just putting them on coffee mugs. And I, I knew how to create listings because I'd done a lot of private label stuff and I'd created my own listing. So um, we just started listing a ton of things and made a few basic processes and um, they started selling and we were doing production out of my basement, you know, every single day along with all the retail arbitrage stuff. And um, it, um, it really, you know, just kept snowballing until um, I had an opportunity to uh, get into a space and um, then purchase some more equipment. And so we, we kind of became a little, a mini production, uh, fulfillment company. Um, wow. you know, yeah. nothing, nothing like a printful or a printify, of course. Oh, but, sure. Sure. Yeah. But you know, we had, you know, we had several clients and, um, you know, we were producing our own stuff, of course, and trying to continue to list. Um, and then we were also producing other people's, uh, stuff. And so, um, my, my co-host on the podcast, uh, Josiah, he was working for his father-in-law who was basically taking the same journey that I was. Um, I had kind of shown him how to do Amazon in the early days. And, um, and then he, and he eventually kind of moved into printing. And so he, he also had a small production facility that he had, uh, they were doing more like 
social media outreach and reaching out to influencers to produce their merch where we were doing, um, we were doing, doing it a different way, but we had always talked about, man, it'd be, it would have been really awesome when we started to have a podcast that we could listen to and kind of learn some yeah. of the things that we've learned the hard way. And so right. we really started the print on demand cast as the podcast we wished we would have had when we started print on demand. And so, you know, now we're over 150 episodes in and um, wow. almost we're approaching three years now and uh, really have a blast. I love talking about print on demand and um, I love talking as you can probably tell already, but <laughs> so it's a kind of a natural fit. We've had a really good time. We've had a lot of cool guests like yourself uh, on the show and um, it's been a lot of fun. What a, what a, a crazy journey, everything from, from doing kind of just ha the hands-on side of things, not mm -hmm. just the internet side of things. Cause a lot of us, you know, I'm sure a lot of you all watching, we, we do a lot of this or we get into print on demand and we, we don't think so much about the, the back end stuff that's happening at yeah. an actual fulfillment facility. Cause it's all digital to us. We just know that mm -hmm. eventually the product gets to the consumer. So you being on the side of actually figuring out how to, do the hands-on and the printing and the pressing and the equipment and the management and all that stuff is, is wild. So that's just a, that's been a wild ride for you, I'm sure. Oh um, yeah. Learned a lot. Let's just leave it at that. <laughs> oh yeah. Goodness. Yes. And everyone watching, please check out the links down in the description. Uh, like Travis said, yeah, the, the print on demand cast is phenomenal for if you're just getting started or just in general. I mean, there's a, there's an episode I'm always able to find an episode that, that helps me where I am in the journey. So mm -hmm. I would encourage everyone watching to go check that out. Cause you all are so also on YouTube as well. If, if they want to watch it. Mm -hmm. um, so let's dive into some convo about productivity and prone demand, because I'm sure a lot of either Kittle users, or if you're just joining us, welcome, super, super happy to meet you. Thank you for watching. Uh, in print on demand users are in this place where they've, they've got some connections, right? They connected printify or printful or whatever it is, or maybe they're right. on, uh, Amazon merch on demand, or maybe they are finally on Walmart or wh whatever it is. It doesn't really matter because mm -hmm. what I want to talk about is how to be efficient in all of those things. So sure. things like how, how can I upload more at one time? Like, oh my gosh, mm -hmm. it feels like. I take forever to upload or like, oh my gosh, I, I need more iterations of this design or I want to design this thing or excuse me, I want to take this design and attribute it to multiple products, not just one thing. Like, right. You, where does AI come into this? Can I use AI mm -hmm. to help me and to be productive? So I know that's a whirlwind of questions, but I kind of just want to hear from your side, where would you start when it comes to productivity? And then maybe we can dive into things deeper as subjects come up this is kind of my wheelhouse i love this stuff i love trying to oh, figure that's out <laughs> you know um you know problems i guess but but more right. like uh so so some of the best advice i heard I, I used to be in in ministry actually i was a youth pastor and a worship pastor and um i went to a conference one time and one of the best things i think i ever heard was build now for where you want to be in 10 years mm -hmm. and that's really stuck with me and so um that's kind of the uh, the foundation of, of, you know, kind of what I want to share with you guys. And to me, one of the foundations of the print on demand business is your designs, you know, and, right. and I'll even take it a step further and say your SKUs. Um, so the way we've kind of organized things, and this, this will come into play with a lot of the automation later, um, mm -hmm. because I, I really think you have to start with the right, um, with the right organization. So when you do, and you are able to scale, when you have more designs and you want to put them on more products, it just makes it so much easier. So, mm. um, at the first, when we first started, we didn't do any of this. We had to learn this the hard way. Um, so we ended up having thousands of SKUs and they were, you know, nurse mug one, nurse mug two, nurse mug. Th and we had, you know, or they'd be like the title of the, of the um, thing itself. Yeah. Dot PNG or something like yeah. that. And can and, you quickly um, define like just if somebody's a total new newbie, what you mean by a SKU? And oh and sure. Yeah. Yeah. So so SKU is a stock keeping unit. That's the abbreviation. And um it's what Amazon or Walmart or whoever, it's it's actually 
Um, it's your SKU. It's your stop keeping unit. But when you upload to these different platforms, um, and we're talking specifically about the uh, the platforms where you're going to be the seller of record. I'm not talking about merch, um, you know, merch by Amazon or Redbubble or any of those. Redbubble, yeah, that that just goes you, into you, the ether. <laughs> yeah, that's that's their SKU because it's their product. They're producing it. It's their customer. You're just getting a royalty. So I call that royalty based print on demand. When I'm talking about seller of record print on demand, like your regular Amazon Seller Central, where you could sell a pair of Nike shoes or you know or your mm -hmm. nurse coffee mug. Um, that's a little different. You get the option to create a SKU so you can keep track of that product in that channel. And um, so there's really two things. There's like the design and then there's the SKU. And so what we ended up coming up with was every single one of our designs has a DID, a design ID. And so, um, you know, 1,100,263. That's that's a design. And so that design could be on multiple products, but that's kind of the main design for that. And so what I do is I use that design ID or that DID inside the SKU so I can I know if I ever have to find something or or something's wrong or you know um I know exactly what design is associated with that SKU. And then what we've done is we created a little key for the products. Um, so we'll have like an example of our SKU would be like design ID and then a dash. And then we have light and dark versions of every single one of our designs in case it's going to go in a coffee mug. It's going to be the light light version, or if it's going to go in a black t-shirt, it's going to be the dark version. Um, so it'll be design ID dash L or D, depending on what it's going to go on and then dash product code. So for an 11 ounce mug, it's MG 11, uh, 15 ounce mug, MG 15, uh, t-shirt TS. Um, and then if it needs it, uh, dash RD for red dash XL for extra large. And, and so I can look at that SKU and I can know, okay, that's a red T that's a red extra large t-shirt. And I know which design it is. Now mm. I don't know it right off the bat, but I can, you know, go there and find it really quickly. And I know exactly what it is. So that's how we've organized all of our, um, all of our designs and our SKUs. And then it speaking about, um, designs, what we've done is um, we started on Dropbox and we started just putting, you know, all of our designs, um, our design IDs in Dropbox. And then when we actually um, onboarded to Walmart, um, I don't know if this is still the case, but at the time they didn't like Drop Dropbox links. So we, we moved every single design and we created a, it's a wasabi.com Mm -hmm. account and it's super cheap storage. Um, I think it's like six or seven dollars a month for me and I have hundreds of thousands of you know files uh, on there. And the cool thing about it is again, going back to organization, the the link structure of everything in Wasabi is always the same until it comes to the file. And so what that does is allow for automation to be re like using spreadsheets to populate an entire uh, column, you know, with all of your design links or your print file links or whatever it is, um, as opposed to having, uh, you know, nurse mug one, nurse mug on a beach to, you know, it, mm. it, it, it okay. just gets convoluted or even putting them in different folders and some, some for storage uh, solutions don't have that same naming structure in their link structure. Uh, so we, we kind of actually lucked into that. We weren't necessarily looking for that, but we, as we've continued to grow and understand how, how to scale and put, you know, tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of products, um, onto Amazon and, and Walmart, uh, and other channels, that's really, really become important. Um, so basically what we're doing is once we have that skew, and let's, you know, say it's a, it's a red extra large t-shirt with this one design on it. Now, obviously we're going to have the large and the small and the medium, and then we're going to have the black and the green and the whatever, you know, um, all of those each, each have individual SKUs. And then we'll have, you know, a title, uh, we'll have, you know, some bullet points, we'll have a description, we'll have everything that we need. And, and those might even be the same, you know, all the way down because it's the same 
technically the same product, except it's red and it's an extra large mm -hmm. or whatever. Um, and then we'll have the actual print URL. And the print URL is going to be based on whichever production company you're working with and you need to get a template. And, you know, so for instance, on a coffee mug, we're doing two sided. So the design ID is just going to be a design, but my print file for that actual SKU that is an 11 ounce coffee mug has to be in their template and has to be on both sides, if that makes sense. So it's mm -hmm. really two different, two different art files, if you will. Um, and so we use a tool called bulk mockup, uh, to help us create those print files because all of our, you know, all of our designs may not be the right size that the fulfillment company wants, um, you, you know, to actually do the printing when that SKU sells. So, um, again, we, uh, we use bulk mockup. It, it can do thousands, thousands of mockups. It can do thousands of print templates, anything. It's basically a Photoshop plugin and it's, oh, okay. it has revolutionized our mockup creation, our print file creation. Um, and I mean, it, it allowed us to, uh, we recently just took, um, I was telling you this before we took 10 or 15,000 designs and we put them on, uh, I think seven colors of t-shirts in six different sizes. And we had mock-ups for every single color. And I mean, that totals up to be like 400,000, you know, skews basically. Jeez. Um, and we were able to do all of that and put it all on a spreadsheet and, and, get all of the, you know, basically Amazon has uploader files and they're basically just spreadsheets and we give it all the data and we have all of this data already in a spreadsheet um, to where we can just copy the whole line down, you know, and use some Excel formulas to, to populate all of that stuff. And then um, we've got a massive, massive spreadsheet that we can upload to Amazon and then over time have, you know, tens, hundreds of thousands of listings. So like right now on my Amazon account, I'm probably in the 400 to 500,000 range of, of actual SKUs or they call them ASINs and it's Amazon, Amazon, I don't remember, identification number or something like that. It's, it's an ASIN. It's that B1796. So, yeah. Uh, yes. Yeah. I do know what you're saying. Um, yeah. So then I'm trying to think of like how or uh, yeah, I'm trying to think of the right question just so I'm understanding rightly, because I think where most people I would I would think watching are in a are a very simplified dumbed sure. down version of this where they've exported one design, they've mm -hmm. uploaded it to Printful and now Printful is shipping that one design to wherever it yeah. goes in whatever product. So right. in this in this Amazon scenario you're mentioning, which is, now that I'm understanding you right, that is not merch by Amazon. That's you having a seller central account. Is that mm -hmm. right? And That's then, correct. Then you have connected a fulfillment site like a Printful. Mm -hmm. is, that, is that how I'm understanding it correct? Yeah, yeah. Up until the last few months, it was actually us, you know. Um, but now um, I'm, I'm actually... Um, moving out of our space to, for fulfillment. And I am outsourcing probably 95% of our fulfillment. There's a few products that we're going to do uh, for ourselves and for others. But yes, we've tied it to, um, in this case, we've, we're, we've been using Guten. Um, so we've tied it to there. So because Printify, I wanted to use Printify, I wanted to, you know, but because of the volume we're doing, um, Guten was willing to work with us and give us some special pricing, which was really cool. So what happens when something sells? So let's say I upload, you know, even... 5,000 products. Um, you can do that. And then when you have a sale, um, what has to happen is it has to somehow get to that print supplier. Um, and so different print suppliers have different integrations with different shopping platforms. So okay. they might have one with Amazon and not with Walmart, or they might have one right. with Etsy yes, yes. and, you know, yes. Um, and so because of the different platforms we're on, Printify didn't have a way for me to automate everything to where when an order came in, it automatically went to Printify. What we were going to have okay. to do was go into Printify, create it, name it the SKU, and then push the order through sure. uh, every single time. So um, we needed something that was, and Guten was able to do that. I don't have to ever recreate anything because it's, we've already got all the print files because we used bulk mockup to do 5,000 of them, you know, or mm -hmm. whatever. Um, yeah. And I know we are talking in, you know, massive quantities right now as, right. as far as yeah. like a lot of people. And, and so 
I'm happy to like, we can back up because, uh, you know, we haven't always had tens of thousands of products, you know? Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. So maybe if we think, yeah, if we think more, uh, yeah, let less, less granular, like that, that kind of style of spreadsheeting where you can upload it to this third party or a fulfillment center, which is great. I mean, it's, it's, it's really cool advice specifically to keep track of all of these designs but if we're thinking yeah. of the person that's still in this kind of more manual side of things where i've made my i've made my this design okay mm -hmm. this is the design and i know that i can put it on at least 15 products in right via printful printify awkward styles whatever you want to eat gelato mm -hmm. I don't, whatever you want to use what what is the advice for that person to take this one design, 15 products, let's say five designs on 15 to 20, products. like just mm -hmm. where would be the like advice where it's like, Hey, this is probably why this is feeling slow to you. Yeah. I, I think, um, I still come back to having some type of, um, organization because you're not always going to have five designs. You know, I mean, we were fine and you could be fine. Just nurse one, nurse two, nurse three, um, and putting those on different products. But when you have, you know, a couple hundred, couple thousand designs eventually, and I, I, I'm thinking that that's probably the hope of most, you know, print, print on demand. Yeah, especially for Etsy, I feel like the, yeah, to, to get skin in the game, you want to, I mean, you kind of want to try to get to 100 as fast as possible. I mean, they need to be quality, yeah. but yeah, I mean, you're not, well, that's 100 listings, but if you have 100 designs, then that could potentially be more listings. But yeah, to your point, yeah. yes. Yeah, so I think that's um, that's still important. I, I think having some type of a SKU naming structure to where and a spreadsheet, and I know that's you know a dirty word <laughs> for a lot <laughs> of people. <laughs> people just don't like them. I don't love them, but I, I mean I can do them. But I I definitely have uh, surrounded myself with people who are better at it than me because mm. um, yeah, I've got a I've got a few virtual assistants, but one in particular, she's just a whiz, man, and she just knocks yeah. stuff out all the time. Sure. Um, so. So, but still having some type of like, okay, I'm going to start the spreadsheet and I'm going to, all right, skew, name, uh, you, you know, or design ID, skew, name, or whatever, type of product, type, you know, and all then of you those can things. Put that in the, as if I'm remembering correctly, the Etsy has an area for you to input this, your own skew. I, I don't. Yes, they do. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You can, you can assign it, mm -hmm. whatever. Yes. And, and I would highly recommend that because if I'm selling a red XL shirt with, you know, a nurse design or whatever, I don't care if it sells on Etsy, Amazon, Walmart, Wish, Bonanza, you know, I don't care. And so why should I, sh that should be the same skew across all those platforms because it's the same product. And that's where the organization comes in. That's when the benefit of this spreadsheet okay. comes in because okay. when you do eventually start, you know, you're like, Hey, I'm doing, a, I'm doing okay. I've got, a, you know, you know, a few designs out there and they're doing all right. Let me look into this Amazon thing. Let me look into this uh, Walmart thing, you know, and, and you already have all of the data that you used on Etsy to create those listings. You've got links to all your mockups. You've got your print file. That's, that's, you know, kosher with your provider. You've got your title. You've got some bullets. You've got all of that stuff. I mean, it would, it's a no brainer to then expand to other channels because mm -hmm. you're, it's no different than what you're already doing. You're just being in more, your, your products are in more places mm -hmm. so you can have more sales. I mean, that's really the, the name of the game, just being everywhere or as many okay. places as you possibly can. So walk me through then, cause it's, it's still not connecting in my mind, although I, I can, I can see it visually. I know what, I know what you're expressing, mm -hmm. But to get to this point is where I'm having some yeah. trouble. So I think myself included, um, most users are going to be familiar or maybe they're not. Maybe I don't give people enough credit. Maybe I should. But most users are probably exporting their their design. OK, and maybe they do, as you say, they've named it, they've uploaded it to the correct place wherever they're storing it. But what mm -hmm. you're describing to be faster, more in bulk is somehow providing your print provider and then therefore Etsy or Amazon or whatever, you're providing all of the data, all of the designs via links or something mm -hmm. that they can right. go and then pull from. Whereas most people are familiar with I'm in Printful, Aquashaz, whatever. 
I've chosen this product. I'm going to upload my design. But what you're describing mm -hmm. is something else where you've provided it with some sort of sheet where it can go find the link. Yeah. So how do, how do we build that? Where would you even upload that? That's a great question. And, <laughs> and I, I honestly, I don't know that it exists on a smaller scale. Um, okay. To where, uh, I mean, uh, just being honest, because we use that, like I was talking about order desk, which is kind of an intermediary between the platform that it's selling. So this on is really a model provider. for scaling, basically. Yes. However, uh, you know, and I, I keep harping on this, but um, having all of your stuff organized is the only way you're going to be able to utilize a system like that when you do have enough sales to actually okay. implement something like that. Okay. But I mean, pairing it down to like, hey, I, I've got, you know, 10 designs uh, and, and I'm only selling on Etsy. And um, I mean, as far as efficiencies go, uh, so my, my strategy in the beginning was go wide and, you know, throw as many things at the wall and see what stick. Now, that's because I already had an Amazon Seller Central account. So I was already paying the $40 a month and it didn't really cost me anything. Now on Etsy, obviously it's, you know, it's going to cost you per listing. So you, you need to kind of balance that with your budget and whatnot. But I think this is kind of one of the cool places where Kittle can come in because you can, okay. you can go in and you can like, wh why make one design when you can make 10? You okay. know, so you can you can have a nice design and it's really mm -hmm. great. And all you have to do is change a little bit of text and it's a completely different niche, mm -hmm. you know. Okay. And so and yeah. and so why not just stay in Kittle for a day and, mm -hmm. you know, find a really get a really nice design and output it and then change the text on it um, and output that and change the text on it and get 10 designs from that one image, you know, with just different text and then rinse and repeat that to where you have. 50 designs, you know, in one day, because, and, and maybe it's only five different images and you've just tweaked the, yeah. you know, the, the text on it. But now I've got 50 things that can okay. go on 10, 15, 20, 20 products. products. Okay. I see what you mean. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that's when, when you have 50 things, that's when a tool like bulk mockup could potentially help you just, you know, if you have Photoshop, you have some Photoshop skills that basically uses smart objects um, to mm, right, place right. that image uh, on the whatever. You can, you can come up with some unique, uh, unique mockups that don't look like every other Printify customer out there, you good, know? And, good and, point. Yeah. It's, it, it, those are not good. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> Right. So, I mean, it, 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 it doesn't take a long time because it's such a, I mean, it does, it would do 50 in probably five minutes. Um, and then, you know, load it again and do it on the red shirt and then load it again and do it on the black shirt, load it again, and, you know? And, yeah. and, and so now I have all my mock-ups. Now I still have to manually, the only, the only downside to Etsy, I mean, I love Etsy, but the sure. only downside to it, or one of the downsides to it, is they don't really they don't really have a bulk uploading feature. You can't upload a spreadsheet. So what's really nice about Printful is you can create your your templates, your product templates, right, with your various designs, and now you can mm -hmm. even select which products you want it to be on. So that saves you time. So then you don't have a to listen time. again. But what's silly is that in my templates page, maybe I'll do a, a little tutorial to show what i'm talking about at, at a later point i can click right so in the product templates let's say i want to edit like five you can select multiple mm -hmm. like you would anything else and then i can hit edit what i tried to do is i tried to be smart and i tried to select like 10 of them because they're ready and i wanted to add all of them to my one etsy shop well that that goes gray or whatever so you know how you can hover over uh, it and hit add to store yeah i was like mm -hmm. oh shoot i can just click all of them and that's what you're describing is where etsy mm -hmm. i feel i don't know if maybe necessarily it's a printful downfall so much as it is that's not a there's not capacity to select like 20 of my product templates that are ready. And then I can just hit mm -hmm. submit to store. Cause I'm going to go in and customize right. the listings a little bit later, but sure. yeah, it's, uh, that kind of stuff I feel like will happen though. I think inevitably, mm -hmm. uh, we're yeah. just maybe it's not ready yet. So there's two ways you can, you can go about this. So you can go with, you know, a printful or a printify and, push all of your listings to Etsy. So when they come in, they automatically go back to Printful or Printify or whoever. 
that's one way. Because if they have an integration Etsy, and most do because Etsy is an easy API for most companies. Oh, and it's massive. It's been around forever. Yeah. Yeah. And so, um, so that's one way you can go about it. The other way you can go about it is just listing products and every morning going in and creating those products with your SKUs and pushing them. Because you know as well as I do, if I create 50 listings on Etsy, you know, maybe four or five of them are actually ever going to get a sale, you know, or, or sure. I mean, if I'm, and so why create all of those if, you know, if they're going to go away in, you know, four months when, and, and I don't want to relist it because it never made a sale. Mm -hmm. um, now on Amazon, I can, it's perpetual, you know, the, because there's no fee and it just stays there and I don't care. Um, but what if you just, you know, focused more on creating the listings in Etsy and less on your integration with Integrated. whatever platform you're going to use. So that so, you can see, have proof of concept of making the sale. Right. Yeah. And, and, mm. and what happens is when, you know, those four or five products do sell and you create them on Printify or Printful or wherever, and you tie it to that SKU, the next time that sells, it'll be automatic. And so over time you'll have less work. Um, you know, if you yeah. have thousands of products, it could slow you down, you know, yeah, potentially that, that Q4. Not as scale. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, and, uh, you know, I, I employ virtual assistants and every morning they go in and they look and see if anything didn't pass through to Guten. And if the, if it didn't, they're going to fix it. And they've figured out, you know, we've, uh, it's either in the order desk side or on the Guten side, and we can create the product in Guten and just push it automatically. Um, then back to Etsy. So, so if we've decided, and, and you don't have to do this, I mean, you can do it however you want, but sure. If, if you're going to go out and you're going to list, you know, let's say you made those 50 designs and, um, and 10, and there's basically five designs with 10 different kind of niches. Well, you can go into Etsy and you can create a, a template, for the first design, you make it really pretty, gorgeous. It's awesome. All of your, you know, your mock-ups look great. They don't look like Printifies. They're unique. They're to you. You maybe have a size chart that's really cool mm. and like a color chart for your, okay. you know, and, and it, it looks really nice. Now take that and just duplicate that listing and then take down all those mock-ups, put all the other mock-ups that you've already got done, edit your title, edit whatever else you need to. You probably don't need to edit much. Publish, copy, rinse and repeat. And so in other mm -hmm. words, what I'm getting to is like the efficiency part I think comes in the batching. So focus on your designs, get your designs ready. Then focus on your mock-ups, get all of your mock-ups ready. Then go to listing, you know, and then create okay. one that's perfect. And then just duplicate, duplicate, duplicate. Because most of those at least, you know, if we, in our, in our example, you have 10 that are very similar. So there's mm -hmm. probably not a lot of changes you need to make except for the actual images. Um, and so if you can bulk your work like that, it's much more efficient than going, all right, I have one design. Now I'm going to create my mock-ups and create the thing, you know, and then here's the listing and I've done that publish. Now I got to mm -hmm. start all over again and it's just not efficient, you know? Yeah. So if you can get it to where, you know, you can create a bunch of uh, a bunch of designs and then you can create a bunch of mock-ups and then you can create, you know, maybe, maybe all these 50 are shirts. And then tomorrow you're going to take those 50 and you're going to put them on a coffee mug and it's going to be the same pro uh, process, mm -hmm. you, you know, where, but you already have your designs now. So now you're just creating the, the, mu the mug mock-ups and then you're going to Etsy and creating the perfect mug listing. And then you're rinse and repeat, you know, 50 times. And then, once you've got it really down, you can hand that off to a VA. You know, you just create the designs and say, okay, I want this on a, a t-shirt, a mug, you know, some socks, you know, a poster, whatever. And 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 they have the process to just rinse and repeat, and you can focus on the designs. So there's a lot of ways to kind of get around that. And, and you don't necessarily have to publish that to any print provider until you actually have a sale. I mean, that hmm. does you know, you actually have to look at it every day though. <laughs> that's what well, yeah, you, you, you're basically that that's the proof of concept method is what I would like to call mm -hmm. essentially you are looking for proof of concept to say, uh, out of these 20 listings, three actually did get sales 
uh, okay, I need to go. I need to go push that. So I need to go up put it so that it goes to the right place because I can't make right. the my house. And then you say, okay, so now I know this is uh, works. So let me connect a printful or a print yeah. fire gelato or whatever. And once you actually create that imprintful, every time that thing sells from now on, it's going to go automatically. So you don't ever have to do it again. Exactly. Um, so yeah, it's a it's it's an efficiency hack, I guess. You know, in a way, it just I mean, it does create kind of an urgency of making sure you check it every day. What in your experience do you feel like? is a, is a good ratio for a beginner to think about because the fear could be like, okay, I'll follow Travis's advice and I'm going to list a hundred and like yeah. maybe freaking 20 sold. And now I'm kind of screwed. Yeah. That's the whole day. So if I have a nine to five, I can't really make that work. Or maybe it's, it's less than as we say, and it's, I did 200 listings and one sold. So, well, mm -hmm. I mean, there's a lot that goes under that. The design could suck, but. That, yeah. And that's what I was going to say. Like it okay. all comes back to your design. If if you have crappy designs, good luck. I mean, you, it, there's just too much competition with really great products out there. You know, you you really need, and that's again, and you know, I'm not trying to kiss up, but I mean, Kittle has really great freaking designs, <laughs> right. you know. And sure. so, you know, you 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 might have a little bit of a benefit if you're using something like Kittle to create your designs because they are so high quality. But it really does come back to that. But as far as like a ratio. What I used to say, and I don't know if this holds water anymore because it's changed so much. There's so many more people doing print on demand now. Um, there's so much more competition. Mm. Uh, you, you know, it's just, it's really changed. But I used to say, you know, out of 10, one product will sell, you know, once a month, twice a month, three times a month. Two products will sell every other month. And then the other seven, might sell once a year at Christmas or something, or, and or maybe five will sell once a year and two will never sell. So, I mean, and that's, I don't know if that's accurate, really. That's kind of a, that's just a estimate really, but, but mm. that's, there's such a variable there, you know, it, it's, it base it's obviously your design. We already discussed that, but also your product, you know, I mean, I mean, because we've created a lot of different designs for a lot of different products and we were fine, at, at the first, we were primarily focusing on coffee mugs. I mean, I have T-shirts that say, you know, this is my morning cup of coffee, you know, <laughs> just because we did it in bulk and we just grabbed all of the designs and threw them all on T-shirts. Oh, I see what you mean. Now yeah. it's, yeah. So obviously that is never going to sell. <laughs> um, and if we see it when we're producing, you know, the actual listings, we'll not include that. But because of the fact that um, some product or some designs make a better product on certain uh blanks mm, yes that yes. also kind of skews that percentage yeah I does guess. anybody want that design on that product yeah so there's exactly. there's something about that to to keep in mind as well if if you do batch uh the 20 designs you know yeah. that, that that does mean you have 20 designs but that doesn't necessarily mean you have 200 products maybe it means you have 112 or whatever because it doesn't right work on an ice bucket yeah and then the next thing I'll say, and I, I, I did mention this earlier, but I think um, the sooner you can uh, get to a place where it makes sense for you to be in multiple places as far as your print on demand products and multiple, like, not, I mean, maybe you have them on Merch by, I have products on Merch by Amazon that I also have in my Seller Central account. I don't care. Interesting. It's in multiple places, you know? Um, and then I have them on Walmart and I have some of them. I don't have all of them on Etsy because I'd go broke with the listing fees. And that's, primarily the reason okay. i'm saying it that you know um if you can get to a place where you can you can support that 40 dollars a month uh, seller central on amazon the um not the merch by amazon side but the seller central side man you, there are a lot of eyeballs there and um yes there's a lot of competition but the process of listing and um because it's you pay 40 bucks and that's it so you know if you i don't know how you you know you could do the math and see at what point it makes sense to do what yeah know, exactly to, to do that but uh, you know from there you don't have to worry about those listing fees and once you list it it's there forever you know unless amazon comes and pulls it down and you know don't don't screw around with trademark violations and ip and all that stuff because uh, i mean while etsy still seems like a little bit of the wild west amazon's really clamped down a lot more than etsy has so uh, you know aside from that it's a great platform to just kind of 
really spread your wings and just go crazy with different products. Would you say that in your experience, do you either recommend and or just suggest in the best interest that those kinds of models and platforms, I don't know if it's fair to say make you more money, but potentially more lucrative than a system that's like a red bubble or which, oh, yeah. cause I, cause I know that, well, I know that merch by Amazon is this is the same sort of method, right? And you have to tear mm -hmm. up in merch by Amazon too. So you, right. you don't have that same capability as getting started on Etsy, for example, where you can just go crazy. Now you do mm -hmm. have the listing fee, as you mentioned, um, but like, I suppose it, it, it technically can be more profitable than, than the, than the bread bubble is what I'm hearing. Yeah. I, I mean, red bubble's cool. Um, I think it's awesome. I think it's really cool that you can put one design and just go click, 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 click. And it's on a million. And now it, yeah, it's on here. a million different, but that means everybody else can do that. You know, and so mm, okay. I think the barrier, the barrier to entry, the lower the barrier to entry um, you have, the more competition you're going to have. That's just natural. Mm. Yeah. Um, and so that's why I do encourage people to, you know, once they've, uh, they understand the game, they understand their print providers, they understand how to make mock-ups and, and quality designs on different products, um, spreading your wings and trying to figure out a way to get on Amazon, to get on Walmart, um, you know, potentially if you have, you know, a, a more of a narrow niche, maybe even a Shopify. Now that's a whole nother, <laughs> that's, that's a whole a nother coffee. Manual, with <laughs> yeah. That's a whole manual. You got to drive all your, yeah. You got to drive all your own traffic there, but Amazon, and I'll tell you what, um, Walmart has really come a long way in the last, I've been on the platform for about three years now, um, selling print on demand. Wow. And they have really, really come a long way as far as their ability to, uh, first of all, their back end is way better than it was, but um, you can also use spreadsheets on there to upload your products to, to Walmart. And um, it used to be like our sales were like 95% Amazon, 5% Etsy. And then we added Walmart and Walmart was really quickly took off. And so now it's probably... 70% Amazon, 20% Walmart, 10% Etsy, something like that. So, I mean, don't discount Walmart, even though, you know, it's, it's the, <laughs> even though the name is Walmart. The dis yeah. Even though it's a discount, you know, heaven, but uh, <laughs> maybe if you can give us a little bit of insight into Walmart, which I know this could be a completely separate discussion, yeah, honestly, sure. how does that system work? Because I feel like that's perhaps an integration or, a, or a, or a portal or sign up that you users or designers haven't investigated yet, myself included. So I don't know how to get set up on that exactly just because I haven't researched it. But is that yeah. the same sort of scenario where I'm making my designs in Kittle and Walmart's going to fulfill that for me? Or am I hooking up a fulfillment center to Walmart? It can go either way. I mean, as orders come in, you can go then to printify and fulfill the orders. Um, you, you may manually have to then come back and enter the tracking um, into Walmart because they require, obviously, require, require tracking information on each order before they'll kind of check mark it's been completed. Okay. Um, I don't know how many of your listeners know this, but Printify probably six to eight months ago um, came out with an integration to Walmart. And oh, so I didn't, I didn't even know that. Yeah, if, if you go to Printify and just search Walmart integration, um, there's a whole help document. It'll help you get They'll oh, actually wow. help you answer the questions that you need to get approved to sell on Walmart. Um, they'll help you with that. And then they'll also help you get uh, like a GTIN exemption, which uh, GTIN is a, a, a global trade number, basically. So it's a UPC. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and in order to sell on Amazon and Walmart, um, print on demand, I mean, we don't have UPCs and I'm not going to go to the GS1 and buy them, you know, for whatever, how much they want. A million dollars, um, yeah. Yeah. So you get a GTIN exemption. So you don't have to have a UPC on your product. And once you have all of that, I mean, yeah, there's some hoops, but again, the higher the level of um, entry. Yeah. The, yeah. The, the higher the level of entry, the, the less competition there is. So um, once you have all of that, get approved and everything, 
Printify will give you, um, they also have what's called a lag time, which is basically their handling time on Walmart. And they set you at two days and you have to ask for more. And so Printify said, and the max you can ask for is five days. So you have to increase your lag time to five days. And that's an approval process. The GTIN is approval process. And then once you have all that, you can integrate right into Printify, just like you integrate from Printify into Etsy. It's the same process, um, except now you're selling on Walmart. Now you have to build your listings. So then is the big three for you, if we just always think about, if there's three things somebody should be on, and let's go ahead and assume that someone got denied from Merch by Amazon, because that seems sure. to be <laughs> a bulk of our user base. I see it in the Discord often. I mm -hmm. was also rejected from from Amazon. So let's say the big three besides Amazon is Etsy, Walmart, and then you would say Amazon Seller Central, meaning you've done the work to create a store and integrate on Amazon. So you are a seller. It's very different than Merch by Amazon. Yes. Yeah. Those three things, the Walmart and the Amazon I'm talking about and Etsy are all what I would call seller of record print on demand. Whereas Merch by Amazon, Redbubble, those are royalty based. Society uh, six display. Yep. You, yeah. You don't have to do anything except for give them the design. They basically are licensing your designs and paying you a royalty for them, which is much different than Etsy. You have to actually ship the product. You're the seller of record. Wow. I mean, this has been a lot of of detail already, just for so much <laughs> like for, for for people to think about, you know, just like where they want to maybe get to, um, the tips they want to put into place immediately. I mean, is there any other kind of last minute tips, hacks, encouragement before we before we sign off so people can get started with all these all these platforms and things? Like what yeah. would you say before before we let people go? I'm just gonna keep beating the dead horse of get organized. <laughs> get I mean, organized. Get organized. It, it'll it'll be so much easier for you in the future. I, I guarantee it. I don't care if you're selling a merch by Amazon. You know, maybe you don't have a skew. If you're just selling a merch by Amazon, all you have are designs. But you also have titles, and you have those couple bullets that you can add. Um, but you can still start a spreadsheet and add the skews later if you're going to get onto one of these other platforms. Um, I just think it's so important to have that. I, I personally know, I'll tell a quick story. I have, I have a friend who was selling on Etsy and um, she had a trademark thing and they closed her account mm, and they would wow. not give it back. And she was doing, you know, a couple thousand dollars a month on Etsy. So she wasn't wow. a small seller. And um, she, you know, took her medicine, learned her lesson. And at, um, she was able to basically reopen another account. And I, I don't know all the details. I don't know the TOS or any, you know, <laughs> if that was okay or not or whatever, but she was able to do that. But when she came back, she didn't have any of her listings. She just had all of these designs and these mock-ups in different places on her desktop and in her folders mm, and okay, you know, on her computer. Okay. And she had to start from scratch with, you know, I think she had a couple thousand listings. My point is she had to start from scratch and create that spreadsheet. And, and she came on our show, uh, the Print on Demand cast. She talked about how that process really was while it was super painful it was so valuable for her <laughs> right to, to have to do that to force herself to have to create all those SKUs and create all those design files and put it in you know that spreadsheet basically that had everything on it so she could continually list on other she also had an amazon account um i don't think she ever got approved for walmart but you you see the point i mean man do it now while you have a couple hundred don't wait till you have a couple thousand yeah, and then something we did, and it was painful. Yeah, phenomenal advice. I mean, I hope everyone listening starts to get organized, uh, starts uploading their designs to one kind of central place where you you don't lose them, you don't miss them. You know, maybe mm -hmm. your maybe your your computer crashes, maybe your Etsy gets taken down. Oh my gosh, that would be awful. So I definitely will second yeah. the notion of of getting getting organized and. Uh, everyone watching again, please check out the links down in the description. Please check out Print on Demand Cast. Uh, check out the YouTube. Follow on Spotify, and you're on Apple as well. Is that right? Yeah, and you can you can find um, the subscription to all the different places we are at printondemandcast.com. Okay, perfect, perfect. Yeah, so everyone, yeah. please check that out. Uh, we appreciate you all watching, Travis. I appreciate you coming on and and spending an hour just talking about 
print on demand. I mean, I love it, man. I do it every week. <laughs> that, that's excellent. That's excellent. So let us know what you think in the comments. Uh, if there's a specific topic or subject, maybe uh, you want to know more about and enough people will kind of hit on it. Maybe we can do a follow up and maybe we can get, dive deeper into something specific. So let us know in the comments. Thanks again. Please don't forget to subscribe and we will see you in the next video. Bye. See ya.